fuck with them hoes. Hey, what's going on guys? Don't mind that little face, just my little opening. This is Mr. Jason. I am doing another video for the continuation of my horror movie collection in celebration of Halloween. Gotta do that. I mean, what else is Halloween without horror movies? And uh, it's just a mixture of classics, some... I guess you can say more recent, but not within the last five years more than that but yeah so we're gonna get into this and i'm gonna start off with one of my all-time favorites i know the only serious one was basically the first we have the leprechaun collection has all seven movies yep seven because the leprechaun origins even though it didn't have warwick davis my favorite of them all is of course the first one and then we got, uh, I'll show you the back. Yep, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. First one right there is my favorite. And then we got part two is my second favorite. Oddly enough, part two, second favorite. Haha, <laughs> get it? All right. Too corny. That's all right. Then the third one was decent. That's when they went to Las Vegas. The cat's going crazy back there. I don't know. Can see her pause on the part there she goes what are you doing back there always invading my videos that's okay she's adorable and you know we, i don't know about you guys but leprechaun in the hood is pretty fucking hilarious part of my language but yeah so i can't review every single movie my cat sees my <laughs> stop don't be fresh knock the camera down Every time she sees me on the phone, she starts to go crazy. Who would've? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. So, basically it's... <laughs> Stop distracting me. Alright, we're just gonna skip this one since she keeps on interrupting. There's seven movies to talk about. It's not gonna happen. Just let me know in the comments how you feel about that. Thanks for the tale. Yep. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Let me know what you think about it. Which one your favorite Leprechaun movie was. On to the next. This is definitely an oddball. Not many of you probably haven't heard of. I don't know if I said that right. Probably many of you have not heard of. That's good enough. It is Jack Frost. Got a nice rear lenticular slipcover that came from the distributor of Vinegar Syndrome. It's basically this company who has a website online. You can they've remastered and put out movies that have that are so mesmerizing. Put out movies that you never thought would be on Blu-ray. And they put them out on Blu-ray great company they've done a lot of classics some that I've never even heard of which is unusual this is basically about a guy who ends up I think it's a criminal if I yep serial killer he ends up getting killed by colliding with the hazardous chemical truck and comes back as Jack fucking Frost a slow man killing people can't get any more amazing than that. One of my most memorable scenes, you'll probably be able to see it right there. Bad lightning here. But yeah, right there. Shower scene with the snowman and Shannon Elizabeth, who became very popular from American Pie. But this is the first movie I've ever seen her in. And on to the next. Like, even if you have heard of first Jack Frost, you probably haven't heard of the sequel, Jack Frost 2. Another lenticular cover. This one was pretty much just made just for shits and giggles. It's takes place at a beach, oddly enough. And it's not the same person who played Jack Frost from what I remember. I can't, it's been such, I think I've seen this once, I can't remember much. So again, can't say much about this one. And then this is gonna cause some controversy, I'm sure. 
I got Stephen King's It, the original made for TV miniseries. It's been such a long time since I even saw this. I did see it when I was a kid. I remember bits and pieces. For the first time as an adult, I've fully watched the movie when the sequel for the remake, It Chapter 2, came out. And I gotta say, I mean, can't expect much. It was a made-for-TV miniseries. I enjoyed it. Obviously, it's a classic, but I did not enjoy it as an adult as much as I did It Chapter 1, the remake. I just really loved how they made one movie focused on them as kids. And the kids who played in the remake, just amazing. The chemistry, all of them, their personalities was just fantastic. I like Pennywise's look more in the remake. Like I said, this is going to cause some controversy, which is okay. Tim Curry's... Yes, he looks like a legit original clown, which is creepy to most. To me, the original clown look is not creepy at all, so I'd rather have a dark, kind of not-so-clown looking clown. To me, that's more creepy looking. Just the makeup and his face and his teeth. And yeah, I don't know, I just found it more creepy. And I like the way they did the story in the first one. Which brings me to my next... The remake, and it's another lenticular slip cover. Actually, enjoy this one a lot, of course, as I just said that. So this can be a quick one, and moving on to the next, because I have so many horror movies, so many movies in general. I I cannot just talk about every single one fully, detail by detail. I can tell you how much I liked it, and some basic feelings how I have about it. It's gonna more controversy. I do not have the original yet. Yet. I did not see it. I can't see every movie, guys. I'm sorry. But here's the remake for The Hills Have Eyes. This is the box set of part one and two. I love the remake of part one. And the cast that they have, I don't really know them actors and actresses, but the cast they had, I enjoyed them. And Basically, it's a family going on vacation. Drive over spikes, flat tires in their RV. They got to pull over. They're on a desert road. The hills have eyes, so they are definitely being spotted. And some cannibals are attacking. Watch out. That's the tongue. Good movie. Great remake. Brings me on to the next series. Involving more cannibalism. We're on turn. This is the three pack of the first three. The first one was the best. We all know that. I just have a thing for campy movies and the woods, campgrounds. It's just my thing. I don't know why. I just love them. Slashers and all. And the first one basically involves... I can never say her name. Eliza Dushku. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yes. She's on there. She's the main actress. Played on Buffy. She's played on other horror movies, other TV shows. I'm sure I just can't think of them all off the top of my head. I believe she's originally from Massachusetts. But yeah, the first front turn was the best. The second one is, I believe, when they did like the reality show type thing. And they ended up just happening to be in the woods with cannibals. It was decent. I liked it. Part three was the one where it took place in the army type situation. I did not enjoy that one that much. But then part four came out. Which we got right here. I actually like this one a lot. I don't remember too much. Because I only watched it once. And this has been out for a while. But I really liked how the atmosphere. And it took place pretty much in the woods in the winter time. You're screwed. You're going to freeze your ass off and get eaten. And who wants some frozen food? And then we got... Ron Turn Part 5 Bloodlines. Can't really see it in the light, but that's alright. I'm giving the best view that I can. Basically, just takes place in the backwoods of West, West Virginia. And I think there's like some kind of, yeah, a, a mountain man festival. That's what I thought. So, these, this group of friends basically go to celebrate for the festival and. They pretty much bring the cannibals out from the woods to the city, which is kind of cool. I like that idea. But it was a decent one. I, if you like the run turn movies, I recommend to check it out. Then part six, Last Resort. It was more of like a family cult type situation in this one. 
And when it first came out, they had to pull it off the shelves and recall it until they re-released it. Because I guess they used a family photo, like a real family photo without permission in this movie. So that had to be completely cut. Luckily, I got this when it first came out. This thing was rare for a while. For that copy, it was probably going for like 50, 60 bucks. Brings me on to the next movie. I actually did an unboxing for the most recent one of this series. Brings me to House of a Thousand Corpses from Rob Zombie. Most known for Captain fucking Spaulding. Fried fucking chicken. Love it. R.I.P. Damn, wish it never happened that way. And we got, of course, Baby from Cherry Moon Zombie, Rob Zombie's wife. And Dr. Satan. And Bill Mosley playing Otis. It's basically about these two young couples who are basically on a road trip. And they decide to stop at a gas station. And of course, Mr. Captain fucking Spaulding giving them directions to where the murders happen. And where they're basically fucked once they reach there. Very bloody gory. <laughs> Definitely enough for the weak stomach. And then brings us to Devil's Rejects, which I have signed by Bill Mosley, as you can see there. It says, run, rabbit, run. One of the most famous, famous scenes and quotes from House of a Thousand Corpses. And it just continues on the three serial killers known as Captain Spaulding, Baby, and Otis going on a rampage, just doing what they do best and what they love. Just murdering people and having fun with them before they do it. I, I, I got a twisted mind. I'm sorry, guys. Very bloody and gory. My favorite of the three. And then after this was Three from Hell, which I already talked about in my unboxing. Great movie. I definitely recommend you check it out. And then, of course, this is like my main movies for Halloween. The House is October Built. It's about these people doing a documentary on amusement parks. And they're trying to find the most scary of them. So they're visiting more than one. And they end up going to this very underground amusement... Not amusement park. What the hell am I talking about? Haunted house attraction type thing. Where it's... Actually... Spoiler alert. People that are really trying to kill you. I'm sorry, guys. It's not just... We're gonna touch you. We're allowed to do this and do that. Type situation. They just really want to fucking kill you. And as you can see on the back there, the characters, yeah, so creepy. I definitely recommend you guys to check these out. And then a sequel, Houses I Talk, uh, sorry, I can't talk, October Built, Part 2. Same idea. Filming a documentary and they're going to amusement parks. And I believe it ends up being like a prank from some of the friends that go bad. It goes really bad. I mean, come on, if your friends are playing a prank on you and you think you're about to get killed, so why don't you fight back for your life and try to, like... Yeah, didn't turn out well. And then the last movies I'll be showing and talking about in my video here is from Adam Green. He's Massachusetts' own. These movies are so great. If you like B-movies, B-horror movies... Well, of course, it's low budget. The blood and gore is not going to be the greatest effects, but the kills are going to be freaking amazing and original and unique. I recommend these. Adam Green's one of the best talented directors out there. He really is. Check out his TV show he did on Fearnet when that existed. I believe it was called Fearnet. Called Holliston. Of course, yes. The intention was Holliston, Massachusetts. And I... He comes to Worcester, Massachusetts for the Rock and Shock conventions quite often. He doesn't charge for anything. Free autographs, free photos. The only thing you pay for is if you get him merchandise for him. That's it. Meet him for free if you want. If you want to just wait in line and say hi, he'll do it. He's the amazing guy. I love him to death. But here's Hatchet. And it involves, yeah. Uh, it stars Kane Hodder, as we all know him for being the most known for Jason Voorhees, and I'm not sure exact what put, which parts from Friday the 13th. Put down in the comments if you guys want, correct me, slap me in the face, whatever. And he plays Victor Crowley. It's basically an urban legend type thing, which obviously those always exist in movies anyways. It's real, it's not an urban legend. And he's... I don't remember the full story. I'm sorry, guys. I'm terrible at reviews. I try my best. I really do. And he just... Everyone thought he died. But he didn't. No, he didn't. He comes... 
back from the dead as they all do. And these people just decide to go camping, whatever, making movies, doing whatever. We all know what they're doing in that campground. And he bumped into Victor Crowley. Nice axe kicking. Get the axe, because hatchet axe kicking. Yeah, I know. I'm so corny, guys. Sorry. And just unleash yourself. The most unique original kills you'll see in movies. I recommend seeing them. But yeah, basically they had... Actually, I should say, I got that signed by Adam Green on the front. And on the back... Is... I don't know her name, but she was the blonde girl from this movie. And she played on one of the Final Destinations. I don't remember her name. She, I just wanted the cast, as much cast members as I can to sign that movie. And it brings me to Hatchet 2. Pretty much just continues the story. Of Victor Crowley... On his murder spree. And the twist is... Daniel Harris actually plays in this one. The second one. She's the main star. The actress of that character did not return from the first one. So Daniel Harris took a place which was great. She's the best scream queen you can get besides Jamie Lee Curtis. And it continued on to Hatchet 3. Of course. Just continuing on the story. Just to give you more great original kills... Got that signed by Kane Hodder. Can't really see it. My lightning in this area is bad. I just gotta do something about it at some point. Get a new lamp or something. Then it brings us on to Victor Crawley. There's a big story behind this movie. It was secretly released without anyone even having an idea. And to me, this was my favorite of the series. It really was. Daniel Harris did not make a comeback for this. But she did, I think, make an appearance at towards the end. Because there's supposed to be two more, I believe. Supposedly. It's a rumor. But Adam Green pretty much did a hatchet screening. For the original one, of course. And immediately after that hatchet movie played, credits rolled. Victor Crawley starts. The crowd went nuts. They did not expect it. Everybody wanted another Hatchet movie and they got one. By surprise. What a way to do that. That's the best way to release the movie. And then uh, Adam Green, it did so well, he decided to tour around the world. Everywhere. He came to Salem, Massachusetts. I believe it was 2017. So I went to check it out. Actually, I have some photos on my Instagram. I should probably put a link to that in my YouTube. And... Like I said, it was the best one. But that is all I got for you guys right here. Please like, dislike, whichever you like. This way, that way. I don't care. But just leave your comments. Like my videos. Please subscribe. If you like these, I have a link to my Patreon. I'll put links for my Instagram and all that after this, of course. And thanks for watching, guys. Take care.